Hello, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to talk about organic chemistry, which is chapter 22. And I'm going to begin by saying that organic chemistry is a very deep subject that you could spend years studying. Um, so we're just going to give you a brief overview of what organic chemistry is about. And for starters, the definition, it's the study of compounds that contain carbon and they are covalently bonded compounds. Back in chapter one, we learned the branches of chemistry. One of them was organic and the definition was the study of compounds containing carbon. And the simplest of the uh, organic compounds that we talk about are hydrocarbons and those are the organic compounds that are composed only of carbon and hydrogen. I don't know why they don't call them carbohydrins, but I guess hydrocarbon is easier to, stay, to say. So there are three main groups of hydrocarbons that we'll talk about, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So we'll start with alkanes. Those are hydrocarbons whose carbon bonds are connected by single covalent bonds. So their general formula is CnH2n plus 2, and that's a formula that you should remember. And they may be straight chain or cyclic, and so if we're talking about a cyclic um, hydrocarbon alkane, it would be, the formula would be CnH2n. And they also uh, may be unbranched or branched, and in the lab that we do with molecular models, we have a look at a, an unbranched versus a branched hydrocarbon. We typically do um, N-butane and isobutane. So these are said to be saturated hydrocarbons because each carbon in the molecule forms four other single covalent bonds. So each carbon then has the maximum number of hydrogens that it can that are bonded to it. And so the number of carbons determines the name. Um, so Greek Latin prefixes are used uh, with the A-N-E ending. So when you see ane, like propane, ethane, butane, that A-N-E ending is telling you it's an alkane and that it is all single bonds. So the carbon-carbon chain prefixes that we use um, are as listed here. So it's meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, known, and dec. And those are for numbering 1 through 10. There are numbering systems and prefixes for higher ones, but for our purposes, 1 to 10 should suffice. So we also use something called, in the systematic naming of alkanes, the IUPAC rules. And that states that you start by naming the longest chain of carbons that you can find in a molecule. And then the number, you number the carbons so that the branches get the lowest numbers. So you're always going to try to number them if they happen to have any branches on them so that the lowest numbers possible are given to the branches. And then we have to recognize if there are branches, what those little groups are. So the branches are called alkyl groups and they are numbered using that same prefix conventioning. So if there's only one carbon in a branch, it's a methyl alkyl group. If there are two carbons, it's an ethyl and so on. So then the next one that we talk about are alkenes, E-N-E -E ending, and these are hydrocarbons that contain at least one double covalent bond. So their general formula is CnH2n, and they are unsaturated hydrocarbons because they have um, less than four single bonds to carbon. So anytime you hear of something that's unsaturated like polyunsaturated oils. It means that there are multiple double bonds in that case. Monounsaturated would have only one double bond. 
So we use the same Greek Latin prefixes, but instead we end them with the E-N-E -E ending. So for instance, if there were three carbons in the chain, the longest chain, then it would be a prope prefix. And if it has a one um, double bond, at least one double bond, it would be propene. If it was a four carbon chain, and it had one double bond, then it would be butene, and so forth. And then if we go through and talk about this systematic naming of the alkenes, we use the same rules as we do for the alkenes with the following exceptions. You name the parent hydrocarbon and use the ENE -E suffix. And if there is more than one double bond, you would modify the suffix to indicate the number. So for instance, it would be if there were two double bonds, it would be a diene. So if it was a four carbon chain, so bute and two double bonds, it would be called butadiene. You also number the carbon atoms in the parent hydrocarbon, but you number them such that the double bond has the lowest possible number. And then you would insert your position numbers and punctuate the name accordingly. And when we're talking about um, hydrocarbons that have triple bonds in them, those are the class known as alkynes. The general formula is CnH2n minus 2. We use the same Greek Latin prefixes, but we would end the name with ein. So alkane, it ends in ane, alkene, ene, and alkyne, yne. So for instance, if you had a three carbon chain, and the formula was C3H4, so 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4. Its name would be prop, because it's 3 carbons, and ein, because it's an alkyne. It has at least one triple bond. So we use the same rules as we did for alkanes, with the following exceptions. You name the parent hydrocarbon, add the suffix Y and E. If, if, if there is more than one triple bond, you would again modify the suffix and make it a diene. So again, if it was um, a four carbon chain and there was two triple bonds, it would be uh, butadiene. And the numbering, I should mention, you always want to number any of these um, unsaturations, whether it's a double or triple bond, you number the carbons such that the double or triple bond has the lowest possible number. So you number the carbon atoms in that parent hydrocarbon, you insert your position numbers, and you punctuate the name. And again, always making sure that whether you're putting a, an alkyl substituent on it, or whether you've got a double bond or a triple bond, when you number your carbons, you number them such that you give whatever that special thing is the lowest possible number. And that leads us to aromatic hydrocarbons. And these are hydrocarbons that have six-membered carbon rings with delocalized electrons. And benzene is the primary aromatic hydrocarbon that we speak about. Its formula is C6H6, and it looks like this. And so you'll see it's a six-membered ring, and it has double bonds, and they are delocalized, which means that they're flipping back and forth between positions. And so we um, abbreviate it by showing the circle in the center, which is standing for delocalized um, electrons. And so that's showing that it's aromatic. And what that means is that the electrons are delocalized. They're not just hanging out in one spot, as this picture would show. And what you actually have is a cloud of electrons in a ring above and below that, uh, that carbon backbone. So to summarize what we talked about today, alkanes CnH2n plus 2 
all single bonds. They're considered saturated hydrocarbons. Alkenes, formula CNH2N, they have at least one double bond, and they are unsaturated hydrocarbons. Alkynes, CNH2N-2 is the general formula. They contain at least one triple bond, and they are unsaturated. And there are aromatic hydrocarbons, and the only one we talk about is the benzene ring, and that has delocalized electrons. So then we talk about organic functional groups, and you learned about many of these at the junior high in biology. So in this chart, wherever you see an R or an R and an R prime, that means some hydrocarbon chain. So an alcohol has some hydrocarbon chain with an OH group. An ether has one hydrocarbon chain to an oxygen to another hydrocarbon chain. So this might be a CH3 and this might be a CH2 CH3. So different length chains. So again, two chains single bonded to an oxygen. With an amine, the amino group is NH2, so this could be any hydrocarbon chain or hydrocarbon in general, and with an NH2 group on it. And an amide is some sort of a hydrocarbon chain that has a C double bonded to an O and then an NH2 group. And then some other ones would be aldehydes, uh, general formula, some hydrocarbon, C double bond O, H. A ketone is a C double bond O and has two groups. It could be the same two groups, methyl, methyl. It could be a methyl, ethyl group. But again, the functionality is the C double bond O and then two different groups or two groups. Carboxylic acid functional group, you should have seen this also at the junior high. This is some hydrocarbon attached to a C, double bonded to an O, and single bonded to a hydroxyl, an OH group. And an ester is typically formed from a carboxylic acid, and that is some hydrocarbon group attached to a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then single bonded to an oxygen and another uh, hydrocarbon group. So you can see the relationship here, what changes between a carboxylic acid and an ester is instead of there being an H, there's another functional group. So that is pretty much all that we're going to talk about with organic. The things that I want you to be aware of is that there are these functional groups that are very important in the world and in biology for sure, and that you should know the difference between the formulas for the general formulas for alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So this is Miss Augustine signing off.